Hello everyone, this is Alexis Cohen and I'm your host of Artist Ascension Masterclass. Creative practices to accelerate healing, amplify your light, and activate transformation all around the world. And today we are here with a very beautiful guest, Ava Laura. Ava Laura is the internationally celebrated intuitive consultant and life coach. She passionately assists individuals who dare to live their best lives. She takes her clients from whole to wholeness in their life, relationships, and business by guiding them through a powerful healing process that helps them to discover who they are, who they wish to be, and how to get there. If now is the time for you to live your freedom-focused life, detox yourself of limiting beliefs that no longer serve you, and create an unrecognizable reality, then Ava Laura is the guide you have been waiting for. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. I love that. That bio just is very inspiring to me. Thank you. you. Some, yeah, you do some really incredible work. So um, how about we just dive right in? So I know that you, uh, you, you work with people who are called to do really big work in the world. Yeah. Right? And a big part of this project is really a call out to creatives who are feeling that like they're feeling this like deep nudge from the inside that they're like activated to do their big sacred work in the world but yeah. they're not quite sure what it is or how to do it can you speak mm -hmm. that i absolutely can um that's a fabulous question and it's so interesting because i was at an, an event uh, yesterday was a goal setting event. We're kind of goal setting, it, ushering into, uh, you know, 2020, preparing for that. And what was really interesting is that I was talking to actually a lot of creatives in different spheres, but, you know, stylists and photographers and, you know, marketing, uh, social media, um, all, all different aspects. And it was so funny. I was telling them how I resonated with their stories and what they were talking about, because in goal setting, we're trying to get very focused and specific about what we want to, um, manifest, right. And being very intentional. But when you're a creative person, you tend to kind of be all over the place. And not because you are all over the place, but because you have so many different gifts that you don't really know what to focus on. Totally. And, and, and that, that's my client <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> so I totally get it. And so a lot of times when people are looking at my work, they're like, wow, Ava Lord, it's amazing. But what do you do? Because they look and they're like, okay, well you do dream interpretation. You do Reiki, you speak, um, you're a healer, you're a life coach, you're a counselor, you do couples counseling. Like what? Wow. But you know, I, when I tell people all the time that, it's very easy to be a one trick pony, right? Because if all you know how to do is shoestrings, you're gonna do shoestrings till the wheels fall off. And that's how you're gonna make your money. That's what you're gonna do. That's the thing that you're good at. Everybody's gonna know you for that. But when you are a painter, you're a photographer, you're a model, you're a makeup artist, you're a stylist, you're a teacher, you're then it's like, what do I do with all of that? How do I showcase that to the world? And how do I not be seen as one of those people that is just kind of spastic and all over the place and ADHD and you know all of those things, right? And, um, and, and so I, I totally get that, but I think that we're in a space and time that even though this is sort of the space where everybody wants an expert, right? Like you have to be known for something specific. It's also that space and time where you get to choose that expertise that you want to showcase. But then what happens is somebody will come to you for that expertise and then they'll need all those other gifts that you have. Mm. So somebody will come to me for life coaching, but they really need energy healing and they're having problems in their relationships. So then they need couples counseling and then they're an empath or they're an intuitive. So they really want to learn Reiki and they really want to learn meditation to enhance those gifts. And so they came to me for life coaching or so they thought, but really then there's these array of things underneath that really help them in every aspect of their life. Mm, that's so powerful. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I would say is that be open to all of your gifts. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to be in a box and just be one thing. Work on developing all your gifts. And that doesn't mean all at one time, 
but know that you can be all of you and show up as all of you and people want to see that. You know, when you're speaking about it, it's like, it's this holistic approach. There's so much depth to what someone's offering and people can really feel that, you know? And so what I'm hearing you say is like, it's, it's just the front door. It's like, you're just deciding what the front door is and people are attracted oftentimes because of everything that's behind the door. They think it's the front door, but it's, it's like, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So how did you decide what your, your front door was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the question of the hour. Um, you know, so if you, my background is actually in mental health and counseling. And so I started out, um, I got my bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in social work from Howard University. And I, I was like, you know, most healers that I was really excited. I wanted to heal the world, right? Oh I knew from a very early age that I wanted to do counseling. I was always really good at it. I'm the oldest of three children. I was very good at bossing people around and telling them what to do. And they actually listened to me. So I said, you know, I can make money at this. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> And, and, and that's what I set out to do. Uh, but when I got into the social work field and the mental health field, I was a program director at an outpatient mental health clinic here in Maryland. I quickly found out that the system was not set up to help people to heal, um, but it was really just set up to help people to maintain their dysfunction. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, being one of those people who really wants to make a difference and really help people to improve and to grow and to transform their lives, that was not enough for me. And I was not able to use my gifts. I was not able to really show up and make the impact that I wanted to make. And so what happened for me is the same thing that happens to a lot of my clients. I got really depressed. Um, I started feeling like, what am I here for? Like, what did I work so hard to get to the space for? Everybody was telling me, this is it. You've arrived. And I'm like, this is it? <laughs> <laughs> like, what was the point? Um, and so I really felt myself, um, you know, really suffering in silence and living a life of quiet desperation. And, and feeling like this, this cannot be it. This cannot be living, just going to work, going home, going to work, going home, and not really making an impact. And so it just got to the point really where I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, that, that's really what happened. And I didn't know what to do. And that's what's so crazy. Here I am, a counselor. I'm telling other people what to do, helping them with their lives. And I didn't know how to help myself. And so I finally ended up confiding in a friend and telling her, like, look, I don't, I'm depressed. Uh, I'm, I'm angry. I'm upset. I don't know what to do with myself. And she said, you know, Ava Laura, I'm having this woman's retreat. Why don't you come? Hmm. And I went on the woman's retreat and it was like the best thing that I had ever done. Um, and, and really the reason that it was so awesome is because it helped me to get back in touch with myself. Because one of the things that I realized is that when we're in the midst of the storm, we don't know what to do and, and we're kind of all over the place and we lose that connection and that grounded and that centeredness with ourselves. And so it helped me to reconnect with myself and get back to soulful self-care as I teach about. And, and that sort of sparked in me really what ended up happening is once I got back in tune with myself, it's kind of like all this bottled up things for months that I was holding on to, you know, that gateway just opened up and I found myself really having an emotional breakdown. That's really what happened. And, you know, and people have to understand that that's a part of the process. That's a part totally. of the process. I had an emotional breakdown and that was my breakthrough. And I literally just found myself on my hands and knees crying out to God, like, you got to get me out of here. I can't live like this anymore. I cannot do it. I am not living. And um, I felt good. You know, I felt that release, you know, when you cry and you boohoo and you get it all out. And then I realized like, oh, shoot, I got to go back to work on my <laughs> <laughs> I had my moment, but my life is still the same, right? Um, but I did. I went back to work on Monday and, um, you know, did my normal routine. And my boss calls me into his office and he, he sits me down. He says, Ava Laura, you know, you've been great. You've been wonderful. We loved having you, but I got to let you go. And I said, wait, what? Hold on. What, huh? Excuse me? Me? <laughs> Miss overachiever perfectionist that goes 150% and everything, you're letting me go? So, yeah. Um, ego had a little bit of a fit, yeah. like, um, how dare you? Because I, you know, never been fired from anything in my life, could not believe it. Um, but really, then spirit kicked in and said, Ava Laura, like, this is what you prayed for. 
So what are you going to do about it? And that is where my work began. You know, what am I going to do? So I did the work that I tell my clients to do. And I tell my clients all the time, like, I will never tell you to do anything that I have not done or would not do. And I literally took what I call my six month healing sabbatical. Um, I did the work. I got coaching. I got counseling. That's when I learned Reiki. A lot of the things that I practice now, um, meditation, yoga, all these things in that six month period, I did it. And I really walked away with who am I? Why am I here? What is the work that I came here to do? What did God put me here to do? How can I help in a way that nobody else can? Like, how can I make my unique stamp in the world? And I, I did that down and dirty, nitty gritty healing work. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that six months, um, that was actually, oh, wow. That was actually um, November 2005. So that was like 14 years ago, literally. Um, at the end of that time, I opened up Avalora's Healing Center. And I never looked back never looked back. And I just said, okay, this is the work that I have come to do to help other people. We need this. Wow. That, that, you know, I'm just in listening to that story. Thank you for sharing that, that like, so, so supportive, Um, you know, just really hearing the role of spirit in, and that, that moment where you're like, I can't do this alone. Yeah. And you let spirit in. And, I surrendered. <laughs> yeah, there's like no other choice. And in like that moment, it's like we really start collaborating um, with our guidance in like a whole different way. And like I'm hearing that story and I won't go into details. I have a very similar story of being fired. Same, like, uh, like interesting wow. things where, <laughs> and then it put me into art school like way earlier than I, you know, but it was, but yeah, the ego little bruise like, what? Yes. But then it was like, this is the blessing. But um, yeah, those moments when you, you can't do it for yourself, how spirit will step in if you're open to it. Yeah. And sometimes absolutely. when you're not. <laughs> exactly. It, spirit will step in. So it's just a matter of, are you going to listen and receive? Yeah. <laughs> that is the choice. Because it's going to happen regardless. Yes. So right now on the planet, like, so what is your perspective on like, you know, the, the transformational process that's happening right now on the planet. What are you noticing with your clients, with yourself? What's going yeah. on? <laughs> you know, so it, it's really interesting because, you know, like I've been doing this work for a long time now and the scape of, you know, mental health and um, holistic healing has really changed. You know, when I started 14 years ago, it was not trendy. It was not cool. Um, you know, it's so, it's so funny. Like everybody's like a vegetarian and vegan now. Like I was a vegetarian and vegan back then and I couldn't get anything to eat. Cause like totally. no restaurant served vegetarian food. It was like pasta and salad. Like that's it, you know? And so it's really interesting to see the trends right now that are happening. Um, that more and more people are really celebrating mental health. Like it was so wild last month. I actually, I, first of all, I didn't know there was a national mental health day. I don't know when that happened, but there is now. Um, but I actually um, was invited to a law firm to speak about mental health. So here I am at a you know law firm in D.C. talking to lawyers um, about uh, depression, anxiety, stress, suicide. And I'm like, this would never have happened, you know, 14, 15 years ago when I started. And so there seems to be this real shift now that people really are saying that, and and not because they made a choice, I want to say this, it wasn't a choice, a conscious choice. It was more of being forced to realize that what we're doing is not working. Yeah. Not working. And people are not happy. And we have all this stuff. Uh, we have all these degrees, we have all this, you know, these material possessions, we got the house and the car and the 0.5 kids and all this stuff, but we're not happy. There's this, this emptiness that no matter what I do, no matter what I experience, I seem to have, no, nothing fills it. And so people have finally gotten to the point of, you know, I'm just going to like do away with everything and travel the world, you know, like 
I, I've seen that more and more where people are just like, I've done everything, Ava Laura. I did everything that my parents told me to do. I went to school. I got the degrees. I got married. I got the stuff. I'm not happy. What do I do? And so I'm really seeing this trend of people really wanting to live in their own truth, no matter what that means right now, because the old way is just not working. And my millennial clients, oh my God, I love them. Because they are just like, look, Ava Laura, I don't need to wait until I'm 40, 50 years old to figure this out. I'm 20, I'm 30. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure this out right now. How do I live my le best life right now? What do I got to do? And, and, and that is their whole attitude. They're just like, I'm not trying to be like my parents. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm trying to do this right now. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, is that therapy? Is that life coaching? Is that what, what I got to do, Miss Ava Laura? And, and that's how they come to me. And so there really is that shift of people saying enough already. I don't need to suffer. I don't need to live like this. There has to be another way. And I am willing to do the work to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the piece right there, the willingness to do the work. Um, so can you talk about what, this is kind of a big question, but, but what is the work? Yeah, it is a big question because it really is different for everybody. And that, you know, that's the beauty of it. Like we're human beings, we are individuals. It's, and, and, and that's why I'm really big about customizing approaches because we're not cookie cutter. You know, this is not one plus one equals two. So we have to be really open to whatever that might look like for you. And that openness is a huge part of it because so many people think that the journey is supposed to look a certain way. And, and just like I talked about my experience, I mean, if, if I had known that I cried out for help and had my bro emotional breakdown and that I would get fired from my job, I probably would not have done it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not think that that's what was going to happen, you know? And we, so we have this certain way that we think things are supposed to look. And then when they don't, we say, oh, what's wrong? Why did that happen? And it's not that if something is wrong, it's that that is a part of your journey. Yeah. That is a part of what needs to happen for you to get to where you want to go. So a big part of it is being open and being accepting of the fact that where you are right now is where you are. And there's a process to getting where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, when I'm hearing that too, like what's coming up for me is like, oh yeah, this is, this is where you really find out who you are, like in terms of self care, because I know for myself, I just did this all weekend. It was painting. It was like, I painted for almost 20 hours this weekend and I feel so aligned with myself. It's like, oh yeah, this is my self care. Yeah. It's eating well. Yeah. It's exercising. Yeah. But it's when I am painting, I, I say this to my husband all the time. I feel normal. I feel like myself. It's like, yeah. And sometimes it's like we forget. Yeah. That, that's exactly what happens because honestly, when we look at it, when we look at the dynamics of, of society and how we live, it's, it's not set up in a way that is for our best interest. Let, let's just be real. We live in a very consumerist society. So it's always about more, 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 you know, you got to spend more, you got to get this to be happy. You got to get this to feel good about yourself. You got to get this to be skinny. You got to get, I mean, you know, you got to get this to look good, you know? So there's always something else that you have to get. It's never, I am great where I am right now. Yeah. So we're always being sold something and always being told that we're not enough and we're not good enough and we need more to be where we want to be. So when you think about that, it's not normal. Like that's not normal. You go out of the country, you go to different places, they are happy with nothing because they don't live in a society that's telling them that they need more to be happy. They're happy with whatever they have. And so we do have to get back to that. So I, I definitely, you know, resonate with what you're saying. Like for me, you know, people always ask me about my head wraps, but that's a part of my creativity and my artistry. I love head wraps and I love the art of wrapping hair and teaching women how to wrap their hair and picking out fabrics and, you know, all of that. Like, I love that. Like that is my happy place. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, it's like, what comes natural to you? you know, yes. and share and like being in that space of generosity. And it's like, um, you know, I'm even thinking about like when at the top of the interview, when 
you know, we were talking about like, okay, you're being called to do something. And it's like, what is that thing? When it's usually the thing that's right in front of your face, like Always. what it's just who you are and you're just letting people into your world. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I have a book um, called Bliss and it really is all about like, how do you live a life of passion and purpose and, and, and actually profit from that? And I always tell people like your passion leads to your purpose. So if you find out what you're passionate about, nine times out of 10, it's very much related to your purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful. So and you have an amazing podcast as well. And I was, I was peeking at the different topics <laughs> and one that really caught my eye and I, you know, talk about a lot with my audience is the power of yes. Mm. Can, you, can you talk about that? The power of yes. Yeah. Thank you for uh, mentioning that. It's, it's so funny because we were t just talking about podcasts yesterday too, because what I love about my podcast, I have not put out a new episode in probably a year. But it's evergreen. Like people still go to my podcast today and be like, oh my God, that was amazing. And I'm like, oh my God, that was like five years old. Like, <laughs> but it, it but you know, when it's true, it's always relevant no matter when you totally. receive it, right? Mm -hmm, and yeah. and I find that people come to the things when they most need it. Um, but you know, I, I talk about that because we talk a lot about boundaries and I teach about boundaries and I and I tell people all the time, like boundaries has gotten reduced to just say no. But that's not really what boundaries is about. And I mean, in fact, I literally, I teach like a four week course just on boundaries and it could be longer. And, and we have to understand that boundaries is not just about what you're saying no to, but it's also about what you're saying yes to. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the thing, because it's kind of, you know, people say, oh, it's hard to say no. It is sometimes hard to say no, but a lot of times it's also hard to say yes especially to the things that are outside of our comfort zone and the things that we, you know, that stretch us, right? You know, that, um, that, you know, we feel like we're not ready for, but we really need. It's hard to say yes to those things. It's a lot easier to say no. And so when we're talking about those things, we really got to look at like, what is best serving me? Right. And so is that a yes or is that a no? And sometimes I'm really saying no to things that will best serve me. And I'm saying yes to the things that don't serve me. And so we really got that reversal and we have to look at like, what is the intention? What is it that I'm saying that I want? Because again, I'll go back to my, you know, losing my job. I could have easily have gone back and gotten another job in social work. If anybody knows the social work field, you got a master's degree, you license, it's very easy to get a job. So I could have easily had done that, but I decided in that moment that I was going to say yes to taking that faith walk, going out on a limb and living in purpose. That was not an easy yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not an easy yes, but I decided to say yes to me. I decided to say yes to my life. I decided to say yes to my purpose. I decided to say yes to living authentically. I did not want to go back into anything that I would have to suppress, deny, suppress any part of myself. Mm -hmm. It's a brave yes. That is, it's like that you can feel the power of that kind of yes. It's, it's like brave. It's sacred. It's yeah, saying yes to yourself, your gift. And it's, yeah, it's, it's supporting what you come here to do and it, it changed my life it lit it changed every single aspect of my life being open to making that yes hmm. thank you thanks thank for you. doing that thanks for saying yes to yourself <laughs> what a gift for us um so i know you also have a practice for our beautiful viewers i'm going to open up the space for you to share and guide us um, in a practice yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that I can teach. There's a lot of things that I do teach. Uh, but I wanted to teach something that, you know, is very practical. Um, because I think sometimes we kind of get caught up in the woo-woo and that feels good and that's awesome and great. Um, but one of the things that when I'm working with my clients is very practical step-by-step -step things that make a shift immediately. I'm really big into tools. And one of the tools that I teach my clients is something called first-party communication. And what that means is saying I, instead of you, us, we, them. And a lot of times simple things, like when we look at our language, 
our language really impacts our beliefs and our actions. And we don't realize how much we put on other people instead of owning and taking responsibility for ourselves. So when you say I, you are claiming whatever it is that you are thinking, feeling, doing. And what it does is it puts you back in the driver's seat of your life. It helps you to really take your power back and really assess where you are and where you're going. So when I talk about first party communication, it's a very, again, very simple thing, but it's a life changer. If you literally, when you talk to yourself, because you know we talk to ourselves, you talk to yourself, when you talk to your friends, your family, your clients, whoever, you just say I and me in everything. And I promise if you do that, it will really shift the way you look at things because it puts you back in tune with what you're saying, what you're thinking, and what you're feeling. There's a lot of undercover beliefs and feelings and things going on behind the scenes, uh, unconscious that we really don't realize. And so when you say I, you own it. You're like, wow, you know what? I didn't realize I was saying that about myself. Or I didn't realize I was thinking that. Or I didn't realize I was feeling that. And wow, well, look at what that's creating in my life. So very practical. Just speak in first party. Own it. I and me. That's your language. So that, that's awesome. So what we're shifting here with practicing this is um, shifting out of the victim mentality, right? Like, so it's, you're not a victim to your life or to others anymore, but it's, it's really taking the responsibility for what it is that I am creating. So, right? Like so that and it helps you to be aware of sort of the undercover, hidden, unconscious. So when you speak in I, what happens is whatever you're thinking and feeling becomes, comes to the surface instead of, well, you know, people feel like, or, you know, people do No, I feel that I do. So now you become much more aware and in tune with yourself as well. Awesome. And so how can you give an example? Like, let's say something happens between you and another person and it's like, I really want to blame this other person for something that that is happening. How would I speak in I language in a situation like that? Yeah, that, that's actually a great example because, you know, I do couples counseling and, <laughs> oh God, one of the things that I realized is that we, we honestly don't know how to listen anymore. Like we've lost listening and we've lost conflict resolution. So everything becomes, you know, how I perceived it versus how you might have actually intended or meant it. And so in a situation like that, it's saying, not blaming anybody for anything, you know, but saying, you know, Alexis, when you said that to me, I felt that you were telling me that I was not good enough versus you always telling me I'm not good enough. Right. No, <laughs> that might be how you perceived what I said, but that's not necessarily what I actually said or what I actually meant. So you're saying, I feel, I feel that, or I felt that might not have been what happened, but that's how I took it. Is that really what happened? You know, this is a really powerful tool. Uh, you know, two things are coming to mind. One, like when you're going through a transformation where, um, I'm going to speak for myself, when I'm aligning to, you know, when I'm, I'm coming into alignment with purpose, mm -hmm. it can be a really, really vulnerable time where stuff is coming up, which means that I might get easily triggered, right? Yes. And so everything's, so everything is neutral. And so when I use I language, it's, it gets to be my experience and it's, it's really working with the relationship or the experience as the, the teacher or the trigger that's like helping to bring up and clear so I can come into proper alignment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad that you said that because the truth is anytime you're going through any sort of shift, you're automatically, you're in a very vulnerable space and things that, you know, maybe did not used to trigger you or bother you. Now they do. And you have to be gentle with yourself and again, and own that and know that that is a part of the process. Absolutely. And this transformed world that we are stepping into, it's about connection unity, peace. And so having tools like this is really important. 
Yes, because it's so important to, again, know where you stand and know where you are. You cannot be in a space of power if you don't accept and own where you are right now. Yeah. So that means no matter where you are, even if you feel like you're failing, the fact that you can speak it, you know what? I could have done that better. <laughs> that was not the best decision for me to make. Owning that puts you in a space of power versus you know, everybody did this and, you know, I didn't mean to do it or I shouldn't have done it or they told me to do it and I did it anyway. Now you are taking away your power, but just simply owning that space. Now you're more powerful and you're in a space to now change and transform because you've taken personal responsibility for it. Absolutely. And it takes so much energy to hold the stance of like being right. You know, it's so, it just separates us when it's like, we're so attached to like, we need to be right. They need to understand what I'm saying. You know, it's like, can we just laugh at yourself? Okay. I totally biffed it. Mm -hmm. I can own it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I tell people all the time, listen, nobody likes anybody who's perfect, not even you. So stop trying to be perfect. Stop trying to act like you're perfect. And I'm saying this as a, as a recovering perfectionist. And, and so sometimes when we are just real and we just own our stuff and we tell people, that's endearing. You know, people can relate to that. They can't relate to somebody who is always perfect, who is always right, who knows everything. Yeah, it's totally off-putting. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with them. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, y'all going to judge me. I'm not going out with you. No. Totally. Yeah. We can just be loose. <laughs> <laughs> be real. I mean, people, you know, and it's so fun and, and it is a gift, but you know, people tell me all the time I get this, you know, with my clients, I get this when I go out on dates, like, oh my God, Abelor, you're so easy to talk to. And so because of that, what happens is, yeah, I get all of that. And I'm like, okay, I didn't need that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> because I'm not going to judge you. I'm just yeah. going to allow you to be you. Yeah. It's such a gift. Yeah. It's, it's create such a safe space to, for yeah. people to blossom and open. And that makes complete sense with the work that you do. And i that is my experience of you right now. It's been an absolute pleasure to be Thank here you. with you today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I know that you also have a free gift for our audience you'd like to share. I, I do. So you all are getting a really, really great gift because I am, I am going through a transformation with my website right now. Um, so because of that, all my landing pages, everything are gone and being recreated. So I said, okay, what can I do that does not require me to have a website? Cause who knows when it's going to be up. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's taking forever and I am just being, you know, patient with the process. Um, so what I decided to do was um, gift everyone a um, complimentary 20-minute consultation. I don't do free consultations. Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> people pay for consultations. So I said, I will gift you with a 20-minute consultation. All you have to do is email me at abelora at abelora.com and I will gift you with that time. Awesome. And we have all that information on this page. So you can click on that link and reach out. This is a wildly generous offer. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're Laura. welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> and you guys take her up on it and um, hop in the Facebook group and share with us what is coming up for you as you listen to this interview. And when you think about really using eye language, practice this and share with us what shifts and transforms in your life. And we are there for you, with you. Um, you know, the series is really uh, designed to support you as you move through your transformational creative process. So we're there to support you, witness you, connect with you. So hop on there. And Ava Laura, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so, so lovely. And dear viewer, thank you for being here. And please check out the rest of the series. We have some amazing guests and creative practices. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.